Hey y'all and welcome back to uh, 4D Farms. I'm the keeper of the home and uh, I'm glad you come back to join us. Today I'm going to be doing two different methods of how we freeze our potatoes. Um, the first one is just a simple way. I've always done them this way. Uh, it's quick and easy. It's kind of like the same way as you would uh, blanch them on the stove. I'm just going to be steaming them in the microwave a little bit. It has the same effect. It comes out the same. The only difference that I haven't been doing that I'm going to start doing today is flash freezing them first, then putting them in the bags and putting them in the freezer. So I'm going to do two different ways today. Um, first, let me start by saying, as I've told y'all before, um, some things we grow good here on the farm, some things we don't. Potatoes is one of those. We can grow potatoes here, but we don't for the work and the sweat and the labor that I put into them and the money that we put into them buying the, the seed starter, the seeds and the fertilizer and the labor, you know, I, it's, I don't get a good yield out of them. Um, one year we planted five rows of potatoes and each row was like 75 feet long. And for me to only get like five or six five gallon buckets, that was not enough to please me. So I'm like, you know what? We can use that space for something else. So my husband is like, why don't you just go buy them when they're on sale? Okay, that works good for me. So our local store just put potatoes on sale, 15 pound bags for $4. And I stacked up, stocked up. My last video was canning potatoes. I did half and half. I'm getting to the other half of the, the uh, 70 pounds now. I did 35 dry canning them. I'm gonna do 35 in french fries and scallop potatoes. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to do my french fries and I'm gonna show you the method that I've always done it before, except the flash freezing. That's gonna be new to me this time. But I will take, I've got my workstation fixed up. Uh, the next I'm going to do the blanching method. So I've got hot water going over here and cold water. You blanch them, then you dip them in cold water right quick to stop the cooking process. Then you lay them out on your cookie sheet with some parchment paper. This is the way that I'm going to do it to show you just another quick way that you can do it. And it still halfway cooks them, and then you can flash freeze them. So I got a bowl here, which that's going to be for the blanching potatoes. But I'm going to take, I have washed and scrubbed all of my potatoes. I've got bad spots off, and I've got eyes off, so these are good and clean. My hands are clean. This is a little big for my french fry cutter. Uh, I'm going to take a Ziploc bag. This is pretty cool, y'all. I'm going to put the cutter in of my french fry cutter inside the bag. So that way when these potatoes shoot out, they're going to shoot right into my bag and that's perfect. But this one is a little big, so I'm going to cut it. Partially cooking them first. 
and you can either blanch them, you can put them in the oven and partially cook them, you can slip them in the microwave right, right quick, as long as they're partially cooked to where they don't turn brown, okay? I'm going to get me an industrial potato cutter one of these days. Because sometimes these potatoes can get very hard and very big, so you have to do something with them. Alright, I'm just going to do these for right now, just to get you a good idea of the way I do this method. Okay, I don't want to cut open any more right now because I don't want them to get. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put these in the microwave. You can wash them at this point if you want to, to get some more of the starch out, and then put them in the microwave. I've just always done them this way. To me, they get a little crispier, and um, I'm, I'm going to put them in the microwave, and I'm going to zap them for maybe like three minutes, just to, or maybe four, just to steam them, and then partially cook them. So look, we're going to do that right quick. This is a good three-person size, two-person size if you want leftovers. Okay, we're going to zap those for four minutes. Then I'm going, I'm watching my water. We're doing pretty good. Okay, now, usually when they come out of there, I will set them out somewhere. I'll usually have my fan on. And I will set them out somewhere, keep the bag open, and let them cool off. Um, and then I will, um, after they've cooled off, the purpose for cooling them off is, is because if you leave steam in the bag, it will create moisture. Then if you freeze that moisture, it's going to solidify into ice. Then when you defrost them, you're going to have ice in there, and they're going to get all wet and maybe kind of mushy. So... I'm going, I'm going to, um, I will usually get them out, set them down somewhere, keep the bag open, and let them cool off and get all the steam out. Then I will take the bag, and I will get all the air out, and, and, uh, zip, uh, you know, the bag, zip it up, and get all the air out, fold it down, and then I'll put it in the freezer. But I'm going to, I'm going to tweak some things this year and do some things different, I you know, you can do this for a long time, but then someone comes along and has a different method, and it may turn out to be a little bit better, and you may like it better, so that's what I'm going to do this year. I'm going to just do some different things this year, um, and just tweaking it, and doing some things different. Keeping some of the same method, but adding an extra step, which is okay for me. So, when this gets done, partially cooking, I'm going to, um go ahead and put them on parchment paper and let them be cooling from from the steam. Let them be cooling down. Then when I get a cookie sheet full, I'm going to put them in the freezer and flash freeze them for 30 minutes, okay? Then I will, we'll get to that step later. The next method I'm going to do is the blanching. Let me test the water. It's not boiling yet, but you want your water to come to a boil. And then let's get some more potatoes. And go ahead and get that part done. I might, let's see. No, they're, they're fixing to be blanched anyway. For the sake of my husband, I'm going, I think I am going to rinse these off a little bit, and I will probably do it to the next set of french fries before I put them in there. If you, if russet potatoes have just a little bit more starch, but from what I've read, they don't, they're low in sugar, even when the starch turns to sugar, the sugar's still kind of low. But just to be on the safe side, I'm going to get some of the starch out, and for my husband, for his benefit, and rinse them and get some of the starch out. Then I will uh, boil some. So let's get that part done. Well, if I get interrupted in a minute, it will be because my husband is coming in the door. <laughs> um, let me get a strainer. I'll put this in a strainer. Be careful 
them just don't do too much at one time because you don't want this to start turning bad. Right. I'm going to get me a um, better metal one. Because I've had some strong potatoes before. Your little skins, unless you want potato skins. Now, another thing I'm going to do is eat some wheat. I'm going to do half french fries, half scallop. Four minutes already. Let's stop the cooking process. Actually, they need a few more minutes. Let me flip the bag over. Two more minutes on the other side to just steam them enough that, that it partially cooks them, but they're not mushy. So two more minutes. That gives me two more minutes to talk. I love to talk. Okay. What I'm going to do with these, I'll take a couple more. It don't really matter because these are going to get um, bleached. Smaller size potatoes. The little bitty skinny parts that's not going to fry up good. It's just too, you mostly got skin. You can put them on a compost pile. Give it to your chickens. I'm waiting on my water to heat up. Okay. This is going to go pretty quick. My next set is going to be scalloped potatoes, my next bag. And I'm going to use a mandolin to make round rounds out of those. But I don't want to do a whole bunch at one time because I don't want them to start turning brown because they've been exposed to the water. There, I mean, glad I caught that. Probably a couple more.
not going to heat up so well. So I'm going to flatten out my bag. Put it in there four minutes. Flip it over in two minutes. That was perfect. I'm going to have to hurry. 
hurry. Give me another tainer. Yeah. 
all these kids are out of school. All they want to do is sleep and eat. Lord bless them. It's all right. He works, though. He's a yard man. He works. Don't you? Mm -hmm. All right. So these are ready to go in the freezer. Kind of plausible, but I'm still not happy with them right now with the texture. I'm going to give them a few more minutes, and I'm going to do some more of these. I'll wash out my bag. Like I said, this process is new for me this year. I'm trying something different. Normally, I would just put them all in the bags, let them cool off, and I'd have like 10 of these bags going in the freezer. I will later, but we're doing it different this year. Okay, so I'm going to get, I'm going to move the I better do some scallops because I've already got these cut. So I don't want them turning brown on me, so I'm going to do scallops next. Put a towel over them or paper towels 
and just pat them dry and get some of the water off and then fix them up and put them in your air fryer. It's very simple. But this is the way I'm going to do my potatoes this year. And I will label them. And these are going to take a while. So all I'm going to do with these is just basically like I'm doing here. I'm fixing to take them out of there, dip them in cold water, take them out of the cold water, rinse them off, and then put them on a cookie sheet and pat them dry. And I'm going to put all these cookie sheets in there for 30 minutes, flash freeze them. When I take them out of the freezer, I'll, I'll let you see what they look like. And then I'll show you the next process. So just hang tight with me. I'll be back. Right. So I'm taking these out of the freezer. <clears throat> and like I said, you can either put these in Ziploc bags if you want to. Or if you have a vacuum sealer, you can vacuum seal these, which is what I'm going to do this year. I did it last year, too. I've got this tray out of the freezer. I'm going to take out one at a time so they don't start defrosting on me so quick. So you're going to just take your potatoes. Unstick them from the parchment paper. Still good. They haven't turned or anything. I just don't want them to start defrosting too quickly. I've already pre-made this bag. I'm going to take, there's three of us here in this house. I want to put three servings in here and a do meal portion. Thank you. Till the next video.